Could you just talk about the quality of the 12th Man magazine? I mean, he's done an exceptional job with exceptional it. Exceptional job. And, uh, you know, as a publication, but as a, a tool of information for our former students, uh, a way to, to uh, really, really publicize our athletic programs across the board, not just football, and look at the covers. Shoot, I learn stuff out of there all the time and get to know, you know, you're in this, uh, in a large athletic uh, program where we're spread out a little bit. And you get to read about uh, different programs and specifically uh, our student athletes here at, at Texas A&M. Uh, it's not only an educational tool for our former students, but it's also a recruiting tool because uh, I think what it does is it gives uh, identity to our student athletes more than just the number, but some background into where they're from, uh, what our programs are about, and uh, the people that work here. So, uh, yeah, uh, the 12th Man Magazine does a fantastic job. As good as Kenny was, obviously on Thursday looking at the film, you know, when you, what, did, what did you pick out that he did really well that maybe you didn't see right away, and when, maybe some things that he could work on? Well, oh, he's got a lot of things to work on. You know, he's. Uh, his eyes are a little bit too much all over the place, but uh, uh, but he's able to get away with it the other night. You know, he, he's uh, he took care of the ball except for a couple times. You know, the the ad lib shovel pass. Um, it was really loud in the stadium, so he couldn't hear exactly what I said, <laughs> which was probably good. Uh, he, you know, he, he threw a bad ball in the back of the end zone. And running to the right, throwing it back to the left, and, and some things that we've talked about in between there. But those are the, the blatant things that jump out at you that can come back and, and and really, really hurt you, particularly in the red zone, which is an emphasis for us to be better. So, um, you know, a lot of those things that, that happen when you have a completion percentage like that, uh, I think you have one ball knocked down and, and one sack, it says a lot about your offensive line. Says a lot about your running back since the, uh, the, the number of blitzes that they brought after the first series was just about every other snap of some sort, you know, at least five minute pressure. So the ability for our offensive line to pick that up, but our running backs also to, to, to handle it. And everybody's got to be on the same page, receivers. So, uh, yeah, he's, he operated at a high level, but uh, there had to be 10 other people, like we talked about, coming into that game. Make it and, and make it easy on him. And I also thought our offensive staff and Jake Spavital had an excellent plan early to get him in a rhythm, get our offense in a rhythm um, that that made that made it quarterback friendly, just like we talked about for, for, over the course of camp with some short throws, uh, getting the tempo going, getting us feeling comfortable. And, and uh, not taking the ball down the field early until he felt comfortable. And as we got across midfield, that was the case. So he says he's comfortable now. He's, you know, so he's ready to take the ball down the field early. I guess we'll see. We, you know, we, we got a week of practice. We'll, we'll, we'll and traveling out. last year and, and being a part of those different environments, I think, uh, helped. But certainly his demeanor helps immensely just because he's, he's so calm. Now, you don't want that out of your linebackers or anything else, but you know the same things that make you upset about him, just kind of in practice yawning and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> it probably helps him in a situation like that. I think it's when Spav said he has zero nerves. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not right.